Hey, how's everyone doing today? <laughs> hey, my name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws, and this is our Monday afternoon uh, live draw. My background <laughs> is a little bit different. Different this time because I'm not in my studio, but I am uh, drawing remotely on the west coast of the United States while visiting uh, family. And, but we're not going to let that stop us from getting together and doing our live Monday afternoon. So I am glad that you are here and we are about ready to get started. So John is, I see John has already chimed in a little bit. <laughs> Hello, my friend. So let's, let's get right into this and not delay, okay? Let me uh, just change my screen here because so I can see what is happening if something goes south on us. Watch the chat. If you do have any questions, please just type them out in the chat and I'll be happy, more than happy to answer them for you. So we're going to be uh, doing using two different two different things today uh, as we're drawing this. And I, I want you to think about this. We're going to use overlap and overlap is a, a technique or a Oh, it's not even a style. It's 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 a, something that we use to create depth. And it's as simple as this. If you had three objects, and here are three objects. This, this object is A, and then B, and C. And we use overlap all the time, and you probably don't even know it, that what you're doing. But it seems to work. So overlap is really important that we're going to use. Uh, another technique that we're going to use is um, this falls into the area of measurement of trying to keep your proportions all locked in. So we're going to be using a lot of vertical and horizontal lines. We're also going to be using negative shape to try and get things in the right position. Okay, so as we go about this, the way that I want you to think about drawing this picture is I want you to think of as if you are at a theater or watching a play on a stage. So down here, let's say you're, you're sitting here in the audience, okay, and here's the stage. And then, you know, they have scenery that is uh, overlapping one another. And from your vantage point, it looks like this great picture uh, because it has all of these layers going back. So that's the way that I want you to think of this picture as we put it together. Okay. Let me go ahead and delete that now and then uh, we'll start a new layer. Okay. Let's first start off with uh, establishing some type of border here and getting some containment lines. Let me just check on this. I want to make sure. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with the border here. All right. And as I uh, look at my picture here, I'm, I'm kind of like, I like to step in and look, make some observations. You know, it is a cloudy day, so the light is far more diffused than we typically uh, use. But um, the light is coming in. Let me just to make sure I'm good there. It's coming, it's coming in from this direction. So we we want to remember that, and we know that mainly because of this this rock surface right down here in the bottom corner. It's it's really bright and contrasty across the top of it. So just keep that in mind as we're drawing. But let's go ahead and get started here. So uh, I'm looking at my picture here, and I am like kind of dividing it up. There's there's the halfway mark, and that's going to help us quite a bit with most of the activity is happening in the bottom third. So let's just kind of come in here with kind of a line and that's going to be like the horizon line of the edge, if you could see that. And then look at, this is interesting here. Let me uh, bring up another layer so we could actually see this. This is interesting. Look at this. Look, this is where we use shape. So look at that. That's a great, that's a great shape there, all right? Let's lightly put that shape in here. And these first part of this drawing is really mainly uh, more of a gesture 
a gesture period, okay? Here's another little thing you can uh, look at. Look at look at this distance right there. You see that from the corner on up. So that's that's something you could double check on your uh, on your border to make sure that's locked in place. Okay, let's let's establish kind of where about this tree is going to go. And by the way, if, if I happen to go too fast, please just uh, say something in the comments and then I will uh, slow it down just a little bit. All right, so we're just going to put a line, a line to establish that one pine tree because it's so prominent. And then let's put another line right to the right of it for this other pine tree. And I'm drawing very lightly here as I'm uh, going about this. All right, next one coming in here. And there's the, this one is in the distance and he's quite a ways away. just trying to put some markers in place here okay the, the tree across the river there look at that it's that's like that's coming up right about there there's another one a little bit off in the distance yep yeah. yep and then we got a variety of them that come right up like that, you see? <clears throat> Just trying to get some landmarks, you might call these things, all right? All right, so our, our top of our mountain is coming in over here, and then it, look at that, it, it kind of, Jets off in this direction. We'll come back. We'll come back in with more detail shortly. Okay, let's look at this here. So let's let's uh, bring in this this look at this this edge of these of these bushes are coming in right just right in like that. Let's go ahead and draw a, a line in here that's going to <coughs> establish that. And then we have that lower bank Let's go ahead and get these rocks in, right? So we've got this one main rock. You see this that's kind of coming in from the side there. Got another another rock over here. I'm just like I said, I'm just lightly putting these marks in here. Look at this, you've got this this guy, this rock right here. So like the width, you could take a quick measurement here of the width of him is, it's almost like equal. You see that? It's like two across. So let's see here, if we come in here, it's gonna be maybe about there, right? And of course, we've got this little guy over there. I'm 
and let's get this uh, login. So where does this log line up here? Let's see here. So there's one end, and it's kind of going through that rock there, and this is the other end. So we can use our picture here to kind of get a nice measurement of that. So I'm just going to come in like this, I think. <coughs> All right, look at that. It's all coming together nicely. Okay. Erase some of these marks so you can see the picture there. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and start with the very very top and and slowly work our way down. So first thing we're going to use the the white of the page as the color of the clouds, okay? So essentially almost everything is going to get darker than that. So let's let's just kind of come through and very lightly just add start to add a tone for these mountains. And as I, I'm going to look at see that see those snow patterns on them. The I'm going to go right. I'm going to leave those as the white of the page. Just go slowly and try and get a nice edge. Yeah, I, I hit the top of this. <clears throat> I went a little too dark on this outline here, but you know, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave that that uh, this this mark right there. You see that? I'm just gonna leave it. <clears throat> Don't rush. I'll give you a couple minutes to uh, get that tone down. So we've got, uh, and while you do that, I'm gonna get me a quick cup of coffee, okay? You've got about a minute longer to go. Fifteen seconds. Okay, let's go ahead before we jump into our trees. 
It's always a good idea to, uh, if you're going to draw an element that you may not have drawn before, to practice it uh, just a little bit before you jump into your drawing. So let's just, I'm going to slide this, uh, wait, before I do that, let's do this. There we go. Okay. Let's just look at this one big tree here, and we'll use that to kind of practice on, all right? So drawing pine trees is, isn't too bad. So let's, you always want to start off with that uh, main stem. And if, if you want to uh, turn your page over a little bit, uh, that way you could practice this before we put it into our picture. And when you draw a tree, uh, a pine tree, you kind of you kind of want to go in this like a this zigzag motion. You see that? So like I'm gonna just kind of come in here. Oh, the other thing too is don't go full dark yet. Like uh, have a a little bit of a lighter touch. And as you look at the trees. And you just start building a little bit wider as you go down. Trying to maintain the same level of pressure. And an even, an even tone, okay? Don't go too dark yet. Just keep it nice an even tone all the way down to the bottom. Keep it light. All the way to the bottom. So that's going to be the lightest part of the tree there. <laughs> and then and then you can come back into it with a much darker tone. So this this will be the shadow part, you see? John says that's good. Thank you my friend. Vertical lines. Yes. So I'm just, I'm looking at my photo. And I'm adding these darker values, not randomly, so it doesn't create a pattern per se. And then you can, then you can come in and you can add some extra pieces if you need to, to break it up. Okay, so that's what we're going to do, right? That should give you a little bit of practice. Yes, thank you. Simple but elegant. <laughs> Thousand in thousand inter, internet points for you, John. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and, and bring our picture back up here. And we'll get rid of this. All right. Back there, and here we go. Let's let's try that for, for real here. So we're just gonna start light on this main one here and just go slowly. There's no no rush here. Keep it light.
oh, by the way, when, when you're drawing this, don't draw it too big because you won't be able to keep up. And maybe some of you are saying right now, well, now he tells us. But I would I would I wouldn't go anything bigger. I'd keep it to like a five by seven <clears throat> or six by eight size. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put in this next one as well. So I'm just gonna slowly keep in that same exact I'm not gonna go dark yet. I'm gonna get my trees in first before I start adding my uh, uh, darker values. Part of drawing is learning <clears throat> pressure, pressure control. Oops. Just take your time. <clears throat> this is this is the part of drawing that it, hopefully it's a little relaxing. You've got a a larger area to fill in. All right, I'm going to jump to the other side here now. Just adding tone. If you're using charcoal, would it be possible to layer white on the dark tone? Uh, okay, so white charcoal, uh, I've never been able to do that. Usually, I will only use white charcoal on like a colored or a dark Canson paper. Uh, if, you're, if you're going with charcoal on a, a lighter surface, man, it's, it's so much of it is just light, lightly just the lightness of your touch is to create those different tones. But you could also come in and use an eraser to pick up some of your tone, which would also work as well. Okay, so I do wanna, let's let's go ahead and what time is it? I'll give you another two minutes here to, to kind of get this, get this portion in here. Two minutes. <clears throat> All 
And while you're doing that, I'll, let me talk about a term they call atmospheric perspective. It's simply the, the further an object is away from you, the lighter in value it will be. And that's because there's so much atmosphere between your eyes and the distance of that, of that object. So if you take a look at this picture here, this is a great example of atmospheric perspective. Look at this. Look at the trees. The trees way in that distance there. You see, they're not nearly as contrasting as these trees that are up close. That's because there's so much water droplets or atmosphere between you and those trees. So we want to treat those with a lighter touch than, and less contrast than those trees that are closer to us, okay? So let's, let's pump up. Let's bump up the contrast here. And we're going to start with this. Oops, wrong color. We're going to start with this group of trees back here. So let's just kind of bring in the edge here a little bit. Okay. I'm going to push down just a little bit here and get some variation in value. Good question, by the way. Thank you. And you can see the bottom of my trees, I'm kind of letting the negative shape kind of show through just a little bit. You see that? Let's jump to the other side. So this other side is the, where the shadow is going to be more on the right side. So that's really where I want to put majority of my darks. Yeah, that's something you taught me, wasn't it? All right. Keep keep hitting the right side of these trees with these darker areas and and then again, don't don't come to a hard edge, but leave some of the negative the negative shapes at the bottom. Mine kind of got away from me a little bit right there, but oh well. So you could you could spend all day trying to render this exact, but. just got too much to draw 
<laughs> I just want a quick indication, right? Okay, I'm just adding some extra little darker areas, filling in some of the little, little light holes there to really get a sense of, of depth here, okay? Okay, let's uh, continue on here. This is interesting over here. Let's jump over to this. Is, I like this. There's a piece of embankment Watch this, that, that I'm just going to add some curves here, some surface lines. And then of course, right in front of that is my tree trunk. So let's, let's kind of bring him in here. And, and when I'm drawing these long strokes, I'm kind of pushing down and pulling up. That kind of gives a nice variation in thickness of my line. And then I'm gonna drop an overall tone in this. And this bottom edge is very dark. Okay, so let's let's start to work on the bank that's on the right hand side. Let's start to work on this bank. And what we're going to do is we're going to work from the bottom and slowly build up. So just like overlap, if you're going to overlap things, you would start with the first object and then you draw the object behind that and then the object behind that, okay? So let's start let's start here with these uh, grasses here. And I'm just going to come up I'm pushing and then I pull up with my pencil. And I, the bottom is kind of going right into the water there. Okay. Let's get this rock in place here. And I'm just adding some flat surface lines to it. Okay. Grass is behind that. more grass behind that. Okay, over here, it, you can see it's very dark at the bottom of that little field of grass right there. We have another little log that's kind of coming in at this angle. You see that? 
light overall tone, dark shadow underneath. Okay, got some grasses here in the trail. All right, we got our rock now. Let's get this rock in. I'm gonna kind of use some more straight, straight lines. And I'm going to give it an overall even tone. <clears throat> okay. And then there's another rock kind of in front of this. I'm going to add tone here. And you can even add some like little dots to <coughs> suggest structure and texture in these rocks. <coughs> okay. I'm gonna move to this debris that's in the water and there's this strange silhouette shape. I'm just going to kind of add it to that there. Okay. Grasses in front of this boulder back here. All we're doing is just overlapping things now. Change the angle here to, to simulate the ground. There's some like, green grass, so we got some value there. Now you could you could see my proportion is 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 off just a little bit, but that's okay. Just keep keep building backwards. Okay, moving to the right here. Let's start working in some of these uh, objects back here in the bank. And you can see that this landscape just starts to fill in. It's it's like a it's like a puzzle. It it starts at first you're like, oh my gosh, where are all these pieces are gonna go? But then you.
you start to fill it in and then that gives you oh look here's this here's this little spot i need to uh to add texture and really we're only using a couple different texture ideas here we're using like grass like this okay and a lighter version of the grass, lightly like this. We're using rocks, where we're using straight lines and some of those have some speckles to them. Surface lines like this. If, if the ground is flat, then I'm adding tone like this. And that's, that's pretty much it. Now I'm just kind of using a variation of, of all of those. Where the water comes, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to use the surface lines to kind of a, a snake, a small S curves to kind of just indicate that the water is just meandering down. And then in this bush here, that's in the bottom right, this is where I'm actually going to kind of draw more leaves, I think. And though my picture doesn't have it, I think I am going to put a little, a slight cast shadow underneath this log to help just say that it's like, to make the location of it going across the stream. this side over here a lot of it's in shadow because the light of course is coming in this direction all right Now, in the, in the background here, we talked about this idea of, uh, of atmospheric perspective. I want to definitely come in here with an even tone of the trees that are in, way in the distance here. 
And I'm just going to so lightly just make some straight up and down hash marks to simulate the idea that there's trees way back here. And then I'm going to sharpen up some of the, these trees that are a little bit closer to here to really help push my eye to go way back there. <clears throat> so right now there's something I don't like in value with my picture. My land, this land on the right hand side has a lot of white in contrast compared to the stream. The stream is very the color of the paper. So I definitely want to make a distinction between those two so that there's no um, um, like what is land and what is water. So all I'm going to do is quickly just drop an overall tone over all this land to drop the value back. Now, it's different than the picture, but at the end of the day, no one's gonna see the picture. They're just gonna see my drawing. And I'm going to actually come in much darker <clears throat> in this bottom bottom corner here because I this is this little bush here I want it to be more of a silhouette where you're this is the closest to the audience and I want them to look beyond it. Okay, I think that's going to do it for today. That should uh, get you started, and now you can keep adding um, some more detail to it. I do appreciate you watching. My name is Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. Please do uh, like and su subscribe to the channel or join our Facebook group, and you can do that. The, uh, the link is down in the descript description. All right, that's what we got. Go out there, make your day great. John, thanks for keeping me company and keep the chattering up. I do appreciate it, okay? All right, post your work in our Facebook group. I love to see it. Okay, talk to you all later. Bye-bye.